for the 9 to 5 Outlaw Does Gaming YouTube and Twitch channel. I'm back again with another edition of Let's Play Classic. We're going back to 2011 and once again with L.A. Noir. This is going to be Let's Play L.A. Noir Episode 5 Gaming Walkthrough. In the previous case, in the previous upload, I saw one of the most difficult, not to say most difficult, one of the most troubling cases of Cole Phelps' career in The Fallen Idol. A movie producer who turns out to be a pedophile was trying to cover up and bump off an actress. Now I'm promoted to the desk of homicide, as Captain Donnelly would put it. You're going to the big league, son. Homicide. So, right now, grab a snack. Grab a drink. This is Let's Play Classic L.A. Noir Gaming Walkthrough Episode Number 5. Let's get it going. gentlemen, take your seats. Let's get this over before lunch. Flight Rose of the Homicide Squad has decided to take early retirement. We will all miss Floyd and the steely edge he brought to his police work. The department has arranged a wee drink at the Galway Arms to quench the mighty thirst a man gets from 25 years of police work. Floyd's departure leaves a place at the top table. And the chief has seen fit to promote Cole Phelps from burglary to the homicide desk. Stand up, Phelps. Take a chair. You're in the major leagues now, Sonny. Rusty Galloway, a fine lawman of the old school, will be taking you under his wing. Your first case is the murder of a woman, found last night and bearing all the signs of the werewolf. Get out to the scene, lads. Hey, so we are off and running. Need a drink. I got the jitters again. No, if you can see me, I'm gonna adjust the light a little bit. Okay, that's much better. You see my lovely face. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna get good and tight come Friday. Home of Dalton. Plano by Trey, but he reads a few too many of his own pamphlets. So, since we're in the case of homicide, that means dead bodies, and also dead females. So, with that in mind, this two-part episode will be heavily edited, especially when it comes to the crime scenes. Because as you know, L.A. Noir does contain graphic nudity, which I'm going to blur out for the sake of YouTube. So there's that. That bum took a swipe at me, I put him down with my staff. I say we bust in there and find the goddamn evidence. This dialogue, NPC we dialogue, don't see is that every day. How bad is it? Come on, you can tell me. I guess Rusty's not big on stairs. He's, he's my new honest. partner. Ah, there's an oxymoron. I'm out of here. I don't matter. It's quite hard to concentrate when you're standing there staring at me. I hate this car. Do you have the address? It's been all over KGPL. 
It's off Tampa Street between Belmont and Glendale. Just a little bit. What happened to Rose? Parker wants the chief's job. Word is it's either going to be him or Thad Green. So they're both clearing the decks. So where does that leave you, Galloway? Leaves me saddled with a chump like you, Phelps. I didn't ask for you, and I don't want you, so keep it to yourself. See if Rose you can learn something about guy, seeing how a real cop the patrol operates. cases, it was the homicide What did he mean by the werewolf? The, the death of the Dahlia. Scooter Payton. The Daily Scooter News Payton. came out calling him the werewolf killer. The examiner came up with the Black Dahlia. We any closer to catching him? Not a chance. Six months and hundreds of guys running down leads and we got nothing. You don't think this has anything to do with it? No, I don't. Ninety percent of murders are domestic, Phelps. Some guy gets into a beef with his wife, he takes it too far. This will be the same. But cutting someone in half and leaving them off the sidewalk, that's a one-off. Why so many women this year? Because of the war. You should know that. Guy gets to kill people every day in combat. Comes home, he's expected to take lip from his wife. What do you think's gonna happen? It's that simple. Like I said, most of the time it is. In this case, Cole Phelps would have written his wife and killed him. But no. So like I said, I'm going to be blurring a lot of this, especially the new corpses in L.A. Noir, because there are new corpses. But it is what it is. I've got no problem with it at all. The tech does. A scoop for the examiner, Galloway. You could use some good press. Another tramp, another message. Is the werewolf back in business, boys? Do you have a mother, asshole? A sister? How about showing some respect for this poor woman? Let us do our job, and Detective Galloway will give you a statement later. He's good, Rusty. He even sounds genuine. That's Phelps, guys. The war hero. Defending the honor of murdered humps. They're used to it, Phelps. Move it along, guys. You got your pictures, you got your headlines. Now scram. on this one, so let's go do it. Let's go do it.
Top of the hill is where they need you, detective. Got it. Yes, sir. Well, part of it. Kids park here. They use it like a lover's lane. It's a working neighborhood. Some trouble, but nothing like this. It's uh, known locally as the Moors. You were first on the scene? Yes, detective. No one's disturbed the body? No, sir. We cleared out them vulture reporters so Pinker and the coroner could work. They're waiting to talk to you. Go house to house and see what you come up with. What can you tell me about the shoe prints? Men's size eights. Pinker lifted impressions size for me to compare eight. back at the lab. The victim's bag? Looks brand new. Can't be the one used on the body. like some kind of puzzle or parlor game. Why steal a table lighter? Public attention. She must be a vagrant. The scene been secured. The trauma Hulahan saw to it. The victim's personal effects are still where they fell. Cause of death? It could be the head injuries. She has been badly stomped. The cuts look superficial. I'll, I'll know for sure in an hour. What caused the blunt force injury to the face? Could be anything from a baseball bat to a lug wrench. I'll have more details after the autopsy. Hmm. Interesting. What about this wound on the finger? Something removed. A ring, most likely. I assume it was taken post-mortem. What does the writing on the victim mean? BD, like Dahlia, Tex, your guess is as good as mine. Could be something to it, or it could be the killers trying to throw you off the scent. Either way, I'll run tests on the lipstick. Any idea of the time of death? From the temperature, I'd say after midnight. I'll confirm with you later. Can we get to the bomba? Man could die of thirst on a case like this. Yeah, because you're an alcoholic piece of shit. But at least you're a detective. So let's go. Any excuse for, uh... Rusty Galloway, that's his name, my partner's name. He gets some sauce in his system. And you got everything you need to see. Ooh. For it. He's already in the car, isn't he? How'd he get in the car? Quicker than I did. Off to the bomber club we go. Either way we came in. Uh, 
Off to the bomber club. My money? A copycat. We can't rule it out. We need to work the evidence. <laughs> You'd love that, wouldn't you? A big head to hang on your wall. The caller of the decade. We've been working evidence on BD case for six months and we got next. There's a difference, Rusty. Oh, yeah? I just started working it today. Okay, odd shot. What's more likely? The werewolf comes back around, leaving us unknown in a corpse? He clearly has a thing for power. Power over women. Why not power over the police department as well? Let me finish, fellas. A guy opens his mouth again after six months of stoom. Or some opportunist who's been reading about the BD figures, he'll rip off the M.O. and get himself a freebie. That's not totally fantastical. You know, the Examiner and the Daily News might be good at coming up with monikers, but they're terrible for police work. There's a reason we didn't get the son of a bitch after the short murder was them, locusts. Where do you think the werewolf killer is now? Uh, dead by his own hand, stationed somewhere else with the armed forces. San Quentin, another town, another country, who knows? So Phelps, I understand you want to turn this into a big case, but it doesn't work like that, all right? A case will come and find you. You can't make it something it ain't, understand? So you don't think the werewolf has continued to operate in the Los Angeles area? No chance. You would have found him. So, the infamous Black Dahlia case has, is still cold to this day. Unsolved. Like I said, a little break in the action. Got to 11 or whatever. Maybe one day.
going steady, come on! He pulled out in front of me! We're gonna take that road start away. The Bomba Club, 11.10 a.m. Yeah. If you drive the drink in the morning, you're definitely an alcoholic. I just don't know how to dance the bebop. Gentlemen, what can I get you? Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. Were you working here last night? Yes. How can I help, officer? You can start with your name. Garrett Mason. You're the regular bartender on nights? I'm a temporary barman. I work for an agency. I fill in at bars across town. Do you remember a woman who came in here last night? Five feet seven, about 110 pounds, blonde hair, about 40 years of age. You mean Celine Henry? Yes. Do you know anything about her? I don't. But the owner, Mr. McCall, serves her most nights. Would you like to speak to him? I would. He sits at the back of the club. Where's the hibiscus? You can't miss him. Is there anything else? Fire away, Phelps. I'll stay here. I'm a little parched. Yeah, Pour me three fingers bastard. of rye. You drunk I think bastard. he's a bit of a gangster. He treats me nice. You ought to meet Joe's buddy. He's nice. Really. So, uh... Detective Phelps, power? LAPD. We're investigating the murder of Celine Henry. For that? Do you know her? Celine? Oh, Christ. House officer. That's the sure, I know her. She and I and Jacob, her husband, we go way back. She was here last night? Sure, she's a regular. Selene is... was a lovely woman. Name, McCall. Eyes, blue. Age, 52. Hair, gray. Sex, male. Bomba club owner and proprietor. Oh, he owns the club. Suspect seen with victim. Was Mrs. Henry here with anyone last night? Not at first. Celine already had quite a head start. But she attracted attention? Certainly. A few gentlemen became very enamored with her and her stories. One guy in particular. I wanted to say true. You know him? No. He's been in a couple of times. Did they leave together? Yes, at around 11. If it helps, I made the guy's license plate. I think this could be a great help, sir. Thank you. 8899. Ring stolen from victim. Mrs. Henry appeared to be missing a ring, torn from her finger, but not her wedding finger. Celine always wore a red garnet ring on the large side. Larger than life, like Celine herself. Did she have it a long time? Sure. Since way back in her flying days. Did her husband buy it for her? No, it was, uh, she was, it was a before aviator. Jacob. A female aviator. Looking at his mannerisms, I think he knows a little something, but I can't prove it, so doubt it is. I think you know where the ring came from, and I think you're going to tell me. Okay. I bought it years ago. I carried a torch for Celine in those days. Guess I always have. Her old man never knew about it. They used to be a thing together. They used to be husband and wife knowledge of husband you know the husband sure I know Jacob he was in the Corps he met Celine on a furlough and married her when the war was finished he put up with a load of shit hmm. do you think he killed his wife no no not in my opinion then who could have done it doubt so if it wasn't Jacob, then you probably let her out of here with the guy who killed her. How do you feel about that? Stow the attitude, will ya? I tried to get on to Jacob. I rang him up. 
asked him to come pick her up like usual. But he refused. As she picked some night to push him over the edge. I rang him back around 11.30, but got no answer. Thanks, Mr. McColt. You've been a big help. One more thing. Would you have an address for Celine? 142 North Union Avenue. God knows I had to send her home in enough cabs to remember that. So, uh, yeah, you'd like to drink a lot. I'm just doing a salad. You want a tip? Refill my coffee next time, honey. A waitress. I think I better use the phone. I have another spoon. Up in a I think he's a bit of a gangster. He treats me nice. Let's get out of here. Hey, what's the hurry? My stool is just starting to warm up nicely. First, I'll make a call, then we leave. Rusty. Sam is taking me to Palm Springs for the week. Operator, give me R and I. Putting you through now. Phelps, batch twelve forty-seven. How can I How help, can I detective? help detective? I need a registered owner on a license plate two boy eight eight nine nine. Yes, detective. I'll need to contact the DMV. Shall I relay the details via KGPL? Please. Thanks for your help. Okay. It's time to grab old drunk ass Rusty. My eggs running. They serve food and booze, obviously. We're gonna take a different car. Oh yeah, we're gonna take something else. On police booze, we're gonna take a different car. He's already in a car. This time we're gonna take a... I take this just to unlock the car. Let's go, Rusty. I'm gonna ride in a convertible. You find the booze helps you get through. A yeah, what our time to be day drinking. <laughs> Sharp is my investigatory instincts, fellas. A smart lawyer might use that to throw out anything you collect today. A smart man might know it's unwise to stand between the patient and his medicine. As long <laughs> as you're not falling over, Rusty, I'll let it slide. <laughs> That's mighty kind of you, Phelps. You know, you picked the wrong job of a healthy thirst offends you, Cole. We owe it to this city to do the best we can in this position. As homicide detectives, that responsibility is all the more serious. Always the politician. It's not political, it's practical. Maybe the men combing Hollywood Boulevard after the Elizabeth Short murder were more interested in sniffing out booze than the clues that would have led to her killer. Yeah, well, if only you'd been there, choir boy. Betty Short would be alive, the Japs would have spared Pearl Harbor, our ancestors wouldn't have tasted the forbidden fruit. Minor syntactical error, Detective Galloway. I never claimed to be able to prevent crimes. I only suggested a proficiency in solving them. Guess that's the drink slowing you down. Oh my god, brother, oh brother. Worse than I could ever have imagined. So it was Elizabeth Short, and I thought it was Elizabeth Smart. It's Elizabeth Short.
wonder if I'm going too far from the destination. Oh yeah, I'm way too far. I need to get over here. Which street is it on? Get on Beverly. Get your ass out of the road then. I'll try the back door. Wait here a second. Hmm. Looks like a B and E breaking and entering. Side window's been jimmied. Looks like somebody's creeped the joint. Yep, yep. Check for intuition for clues. Yep, here we go. Let's check out the newspaper. Family burnt to death. 
Cops say house fire deaths are suspicious. Husband, wife, two young children killed. That I had to go back, Doctor. The fires are cathartic. They allow you to confront your past. You said the house would be empty. Are you taking the medication I have prescribed? You said the house would be empty. I heard them screaming. The circumstances were unfortunate. My colleagues had made all the necessary arrangements. You said the house would be empty. You're killing me! The deaths were unfortunate, but you have dealt with death before. I want you to come to the clinic and we can deal you with it. You said the house would be empty! How can I find peace? Let's look around. Jewelry. Tiffany. Rain box. The rest of the stuff is junk. Might explain the missing ring. A regular Amelia Earhart per day. The ring looks distinctive. Selena and Jacob are obviously too. having problems. It speaks to motive. Ten fifty. Crime scene drive. evidence still weighs against it being Telephone a husband. But Jacob could give us something two, to go on. Two, two, one. Jacob. So one of my exes drank like strange. this. You'd be feeling the back of my hand. Call in burglary and get technical services out here. I'll talk to the neighbors. Don't take all day about it, Phelps. I get nasty when I'm thirsty. Forced Burglar used a pry bar. Why did you kick the door in? You think I'm going to climb through a broken window in a $30 suit? You got another thing coming, buster. <laughs> $30 for a suit? Mm. Times were different back then. Galloway, homicide, badge number 564. Requesting technical services for a suspected 459 at 142 North Union. Talk to somebody. Yes. Hello. I Miss? knew it wasn't safe around here anymore. LAPD, are you acquainted with Celine Henry, Miss Horgan? Jennifer Horgan. I've known Celine for more than ten years. Our children grew up together. What's going on, officer? Did you see Mrs. Henry go out last night? Well, I'm no busybody, you understand, but... Celine had been drinking, and she and poor, long-suffering Jacob had a terrible row. I think Jacob may have given her a black eye. He stormed out, and she went back inside. Did he come back? No. Celine was listening to music and shouting until she left around 10 p.m. She was very drunk to have been driving. But she is not the sort of person you can stop from doing something when her dander is up. What is this about, officer? Is Celine all right? I'm afraid Mrs. Henry has been murdered, ma'am. Murdered? Oh, my God. I'm afraid I need to go and then sit down.
So there were marital, marital problems. Let's see what Jacob has to say for himself. I don't think Jacob is our man, but we should see what he has to say. Let's go. Jacob Henry had a violent argument with his wife last night. He's looking more and more likely. Uh, for my money, if the broad keeps the house looking like that, she probably deserved it. The skipper says bring him in and keep the hacks off our backs for a while. Fine by me. So it ain't the werewolf killer after all. Good to see you've come to your senses, Cole. I always said work the evidence. I only stipulated a connection to the BD killer as an avenue of investigation we should leave open. And as far as I'm concerned, it still is. This ain't our car. Not that give a shit. You been drinking. No, he has. <laughs> and he's not even driving. I'm not the passenger. Ah, 
Okay, okay Phil, you're apartment. going hard. You follow my lead. Yeah. Jacob Henry? Yeah. Who's asking? LAPD. You're under arrest for the murder of your wife, Celine Henry. Murder? Celine? Save the dramatic. Oh, oh my for God. RKO, pal. You got bigger problems. What the hell are you talking about? You come in here, you tell me that Celine is. Take a seat, Mr. Henry. She's... We're going to have a look around, I... then we'll talk. Jesus. I'm sorry. I... Yeah, sit your ass down. We'll deal with you later. I get even the slightest hint that you're a flight risk, pal. And I'm putting in, he's putting a boat in you. What we got here? It's a military trick up here. You think the atmosphere's thick in here? Let's see, he's trying to catch <laughs> He'll be back any moment, just sit tight. And don't try any shit either. Take up his room. This problem there is what to do about the old lady. A death threat note. What we got here? Size 11. Size 11s. He's definitely not our guy. Jacob Henry. You and me are about to have a little chat. Jacob Henry. Eyes brown, age 45, hair brown, sex male, husband of murder victim Celine Henry. Movements of victim. So who could have killed Celine? Where did she go last night, Jacob? A bar, I suppose. Look, I don't know. Oh, I think you do know. Look the way your eyes are moving. You know. And I also know you're lying. You know where she went, Jacob. You're lying. Why would I help you if you keep lying to me? Look, I'm telling you, I don't know. Well, according to Dick McCall, who owns the Bomber Club and the ex-husband, club owner McCall reports telephoning Jacob Henry repeatedly on night of murder. We know she went to the Bomber Club. The bartender there, he, he calls me if things are getting out of hand and I go and I bring her home. He called me last night. I said no. Phone rang a couple more times after that. I ignored it. I'm gonna have to live with that. Last contact with victim. When did you last see your wife, Mr. Henry? Last night. I went to see her, we talked. Things got a little out of hand. I left. You don't remember what time you last saw your wife alive? Look, I'm sorry. I left. 
maybe 9 p.m. Might have been a little later, but right around 9. Motive for murder. Why did you kill her, Jacob? Things will go better if you come clean about it. That's a lousy thing to say. I never gave up on my wife. Oh, yeah? Well, guess what I found? Your lie. I don't believe you, Jacob. I think you didn't have the guts to do it yourself, so you had someone else do it. You want to back that up with something, Big Mouth? Huh? Yeah. The only thing I can back it up with. The accusation with And that, of course, is... Impression from note written by Jacob Henry concerning wife Celine. Death threat note. The note by the phone suggests you meant her harm. You want the truth? Truth is, I was sick to death of her. I was trying to have her committed. We're still going to need you to come downtown, Mr. Henry. We can get this all down on paper, Jacob. How you got fed up with your wife and how you figured killing her would bury all your troubles. Kill my own wife? She was a loss of the trap and you just couldn't stand it anymore. Shut your goddamn mouth! <laughs> so Look now you're gonna tell me you him. loved her? He's ah, the DA him. goes all gooey Look over remorse, Jacob. Oh yeah? You're awful hot under the collar for an innocent man, Mr. Henry. Look like Rock'em Sock'em Robots. The game mechanics of the fighting. Looks like Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Well, you didn't have breakfast. This is about to spill out out of your mouth and onto your boiler suit. Jacob Henry. Call it in and get a squad car dispatch. You're under arrest. And check for messages. Of murder at the murder of slugger uh, here. Celine Henry. Placed under arrest. Better make that phone call. Operator, message for KGPL. Putting you through now. Cole Phelps, badge 1247. How could I help, Detective? I need a patrol unit to transport a suspect back to Central. Certainly, Detective. You have a message from the coroner. Do you wish to be put through? Yes, ma'am. Please. Carruthers. It's Phelps. I've completed the autopsy. Several wounds to the head from a blunt metal instrument. Closest match would be a socket wrench handle. So the cause of death was the blunt... No, the blows to the head surprisingly were not fatal. Death was from hemorrhage and shock from the fractured ribs and multiple injuries caused by the stomping. Anything else? He's some kind of sex fiend. The tissues of the anus were bruised about one-eighth of an inch, Ooh. but no trace of semen in the anus, vagina, or stomach. Thanks, Doc. Operator, give me R&I. &D. Any word on an owner for that vehicle? License was 2Boy8899? Yes, Detective. The plate belongs to a brown 1936 Pontiac. Registered owner is one Alonzo Mendez of 402 South Fremont Street, apartment 16. Thanks. Any other messages? One, Detective. From Captain Donnelly. He wants any and all suspects returned to Central. Interviews to be set up immediately. Got it. We're coming in. You're behind the wheel. And where exactly are we going? I don't need this. Carruthers said she took a real pounding. Maybe if he had been a little firmer in the beginning, he wouldn't be in this situation now. 
I imagine that Neanderthal routine is a big hit with the ladies, Galloway. Women love me, Phelps. I have no complexity. They know exactly what they're going to get. We have a firm lead, Captain. Are you questioning my judgment, Cole Phelps? No, sir. Good. I thought not. Jacob Henry is a subsister pushed around by his wife. I think with the right kind of persuasion, he might be prepared to seek absolution. Are you prepared to show him the error of his ways, young Phelps? I don't think he's our man. Galloway agrees with me. Don't drag me into this. Rusty is a practical policeman. A bird in hand is always worth two in the bush. Let's liberate. Okay, I don't get these analogies, Captain Donnelly, sleep and these references. Run along now, folks. I've warmed them up nicely for you. I think we bust in there and find the goddamn enemy. Doesn't look good, Jacob. You're in a big jam here. You lie to me, and I can't help you out. Do you understand me? Yes. Access to murder weapon. What do you do for work, Jacob? I'm a mechanic. Engines, differentials, transmissions, that kind of stuff. So you have access to tools? Yes, I do. Your wife was brutally beaten with a socket wrench handle, then stomped to death. How do you think that looks, Jacob? I was home in bed. Okay, you're definitely fucking lying. Stop. You're full of shit, lying. Jacob. The truth is, you hated that bitch. You followed her and dragged her into the car and then took her out to the moors. She woke up and you smashed her face in with a socket. No. Bitch. No, 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 no. And then you stomped no. her. No. You stomped her because she's a drunken whore and she treated you like shit. You stomped her for all the years you had to take it. You stomped her because you are such a weak fucking sister, Jacob, and you wanted to erase all memory of it. Go on. Try to deny it. I was at home. I should have gone to her at the bar, but I didn't. You can't prove I wasn't home. Oh, yes, I can. <laughs> According to Dick McCall, this... I can. The bar owner, McCall, gave you up. He called your house right at the time that someone was smashing Celine's skull in and got no answer. If we find that socket wrench, you're gonna fry. Get it off your chest. Tell me you killed her. I killed her, all right. I killed her dreams. She was an aviator. Famous in her day, flying around up there like a bird. But she never wanted to come back down. You know, my pop was a sod farmer, dirt poor. I joined the Corps, trained to be a mechanic. I did better than my father did. I worked hard for it. That's all you can ask of a man. But Celine, she never wanted to come down from the clouds. She wanted everything I couldn't give her. All I had was security. That was never going to be enough. <laughs> Lipstick market. You did it. Everything points to you. What does Tex mean, Jacob? I, I don't know what you're talking about. He seems to be telling the truth now, so... Truth. I need a reason to believe you, Jacob. You want a confession? That's what you want? That's exactly what we want. Seems to me there are two types of marriages. The first, where the couple love each other equally and everything's roses and then there's the other where one person loves the other more than life itself and always puts them first chumps like me who love them no matter what no matter how badly they behave that's it that's my confession I love my wife 
and I'll take any test you got to prove it. Yeah, well, this interrogation is a test. So explain the deterioration of marriage. Your marriage was over. You took her in and she threw it back in your face. You didn't go over there to hurt her. It just got out of hand. It's not how it was. Oh, really, Mr. Henry? You're lying. You're lying, Jacob. It was falling apart and things got violent. I'm not lying. I'm telling you how it was. Yeah, well, the eyewitness account of the neighbor, in this case, a Jennifer Horrigan, living right across from you, living next door, would surmise that you and Celine had marital problems. Jenny Horgan says you blackened her eye. It's all right, Jacob. The DA will understand. In your shoes, I would have done exactly the same thing. I <laughs> hit her. Coaxing her. All right? Coaxing her. Not proud of it, but she was coming at me with a frying pan. What would you do? Probably would Took you it do, for years. Not, murder her, not kill her. Sometimes a man can only take so much. <laughs> Missing jewelry. Why did you break into your wife's house, Jacob? Why steal the ring? What? What are you talking about? I've got a key. Why would I need to break in? He's definitely telling the truth this time, so... Proof. You took the ring because you found out who gave it to her. What are you talking about? Her prized garnet ring, given to her by her old boyfriend, Dick McCall. I never knew that. I lived with that woman for three years, and... I never knew that. Well, in that case... I think you should be talking to Dick McCall. We'll do the detective work, Lunkhead. Just answer the questions. I'll see what I can do for you, Jacob. But I'm not promising. It still looks bad for you. I believe you're innocent. Phelps! You failed me, son. We have another lead, Captain. This guy Mendez could be our man. I hope so, Phelps. I really hope so. I'm deeply disturbed by your style of police work. We can still pull down a conviction for the skipper if we chase down this Mendez guy. Need a drink. I got the jitters again. You can drive. Fine. Where are we headed? Alonzo Mendez. Sound like a man who moonlights as the werewolf? Don't sound like a man I'd let my daughter anywhere near. You've got a daughter. Spend enough time drinking, Cole, you'll find yourself with any number of things you don't want when you're sober. So that's why you never sober up. Exactly. Mendez apartment, 1.39 p.m. I'm going to take a quick break, and I'll be back with some more Let's Play Classic of L.A. Noir Episode 5. In just a moment, keep it tight, keep it locked.
I'm back from break, and now we can continue with the conclusion to L.A. Noir case of the Red Lipstick Murder, right now on the 9 to 5 All Out Does Gaming YouTube and Twitch channel. Then we're going to go right into the next case, the Golden Butterfly. So, here we go. Here, the apartment's up on the top floor. Don't bother knocking, just kick the door in. Take a look around and see what you can find. Take a smarter man than me to connect that. Bloody socket wrench. Consistent with Celine's injuries, and the blood can be typed. We have the murder weapon. We better get Pinker down here. Why keep it? Why not throw it away? Think these clowns are geniuses? Thank your stars you caught a break. Captain Donald will begin to like you. Hey! What gives? LAPD, you're under arrest. Do not lose that son of a bitch. I'll go get our wheels. Mendez, stop right there. Stop! You don't need to do this, Alonzo! idea. Get him next to my window, call. Keep me alongside his vehicle and I'll stop the son of a bitch.
God damn it, get after him, Cole. idea. Get him next to my window, Cole. Keep me alongside his vehicle and I'll stop this son of a bitch. Help! You gotta get me closer! Keep it on the road, goddammit! I'll try to shoot out his tire. Wish me luck. Got him. Get your ass out of the fucking of car. Sweet Henry. I ain't saying a goddamn thing. You did a grand job, lads. Phelps, that's quite a way to acquit yourself in your first outing as a homicide investigator. It seems the city has a new and vengeful guardian. Considering the evidence against your suspect, and the thoroughness with which a report was compiled, I foresee a safe passage through the courts, and the DA agrees with me. Brutality on a scale such as this deserves retribution. The people and the press of this city demand it. <laughs> I heard that that actor was in Miller's Crossing, Andrew Connolly, playing Captain Donnelly. Okay, let's see how I did. The Red Lipstick Murder. Clues found 16 out of 19. Questions correct 10 out of 10. Distinguished. Four stars. Vehicle damage 293. City damage 264. Jacob Henry is left to mourn while Mendes waits at lockup for a visit from the DA. Woohoo! Oh, that's good. The Golden Galloway. Got it, Skipper. Yeah, I'll bring him. He's my partner, after all. What have we got? New case. White female dumped in plain sight in the grass at the end of Hill Street. Hacks are all over it. The captain's trying to fend him off. That sounds awfully similar. The first rule of police work is make no assumptions until you've seen the evidence. Skipper wants you to have your newspaper face on, college boy. I think I know the place where they found the lady. It overlooks Sunset Boulevard. Let's go. Okay, for those of you just tuning in to this episode of Let's Play Classic L.A. Noir Episode 5, I, I previously just here. solved Find the, the red evidence. lipstick murder case, and now I'm for case well, number two sister, of this I was episode, so tight, I The Golden walk. Butterfly. And, as always, for this portion of this series, 
Are you drunk, in mister? In these cases, specifically in crack? homicide, there's going to be a lot of bodies found with completely stripped, up? naked, and murdered. So with that in mind, I'm gonna, it's going to be an edited episode because of graphical nudity. So keep that in mind. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. And if you would like what you see, you did a decent job on the Henry case. Feel though. free to subscribe. Not bad for your first time in comment. Thanks for like and hit the bell. Don't go getting ahead of yourself. That's one clearance under your belt. Now it's a new day with a new dead lady that needs our attention. No assumptions until we see the evidence. Right. Right. Also, See, I knew you were a fast you feel generous and would like to contribute to my channel, after all. I do have a Patreon. Link is in the description below. I would greatly appreciate that. And now, let's continue on with more Let's Play L.A. Noir, Episode 5. Crime now, scene. boys, boys, you know as much as I do. I'll be holding a press conference once the autopsy is being completed. I have two of my finest investigators on the case, fresh from bringing down the sword of justice on the crazed sex... Captain! Aren't Linus. there similarities between this murder and the murder of Celine Henry? And of Elizabeth Short, for that matter. So you don't matter. believe there's a crazed sex killer at large boys, preying on women? Boys, be sensible. We have the greatest police force in all the world, with the greatest scientific investigators at our disposal. How can any killer continue to be that? Be advised. We keep the gas chamber at San Quentin primed for the sons of Cain who continue to believe they can take a life. The sons sons of Cain. Yeah, yeah, right. Any new leads in the Dahlia case? Run along, boys, and let these officers get to work. We have God's work to do here, and it can't be delayed. Oh, he sure loves the grandstand, doesn't he? What do we have, Captain? Another woman sacrificed. Speak to Carruthers. I want daily reports, gentlemen. This is your chance. Don't fear this is me. Awful. It's just awful. You got Why that right, sister. Detective, I was first on scene. Oh, she's the least bit squeamish. Show off to you. Clear this area immediately. You oh, find her, Gonzalez? Not me. Family out for a stroll. I was first reporting. Can you show me the body? It's under the pepper tree, this way. Isn't he the cop they've been talking about on the radio? Want another accommodation? Hispanic voices. Can't be much help to you, Phelps. Footprints. The stopping angle in the Henry case. Was it reported in the press? Sure was. Every detail a copycat would want was there in the story. Mm. The victim's purse. Deidre oh, we have a name. Muller. Can you run Deirdre Muller by R and I? Back in a second. Parent Teacher Association. She's a member of the PTA. If the motive was robbery, why not take the money? Officer Gonzalez, badge 994. Similar MO. To what? The Dahlia? I don't think so. Celine Henry. That's a closed case. This is probably another sad sack who lost his temper with a broad who wouldn't put out. Are you a suspect, Rusty? Watch your mouth, Phelps. Yeah. All I'm saying is we got We're enough to do without reopening closed cases. Talk me through it now. Severely battered, on display. Footprints would indicate that she has been stomped. Size of the footprints would seem to indicate a smallish men's shoe. What size shoe did Mendez wear? You finished? No, I'm not. At a glance, I would say strangulation is the cause I mean, of death. I need to do further tests for semen. Angry boyfriend. Literally. They were married, they'd be at home. Not humping out here in Lover's Lane. So much for a guy. Mind if I examine the body? The my guess. Remember, a watch. Looks like she was tied up. 
does it first, but that would leave a mark on her other wrist, too. I think her watch might have been torn off. Mm -hmm. Was wearing a watch. The victim was not oh, break. Another day, another dollar. There's even rope burns on her neck. Look at your mark. It's very distinctive. Like BTK shit. I'll do some comparisons back at the lab and get back to you. Only he, yeah, he did rope his victim. BTK was also known as Bind Torture Kill out of Wichita, Kansas in the 1970s, folks. If you're a true crime, you know, an aficionado. Stumped on. The victim was stumped on. But there are no marking, lipstick marks. Catch all the good ones, fellas. Don't I ever. What's this Three mark? It's a cut on a finger. Fourth finger, left hand, a wedding or engagement ring, violently removed. Yep, pried off with a lick of the blood. Just pried off of her. Almost even with a knife. What'd I tell you? Just grab the husband, take him downtown, and work him over. We could have this wrapped up by lunchtime. What about not making assumptions and going on the evidence? Can we discuss this later? Sure. I like this car, so let's take this one. Let's take this tailor. Pinker's car. Hey, Pinker, I'm taking your car. <laughs> Come on, Rusty. Come on, Rust Bucket. Let's go. We got some bad guys to catch. Get it. Get it. Get Still might be some play in the boyfriend angle. I thought we were on our way to lock up the husband. If it doesn't work out, then. Deirdre Muller has suffered enough. More than enough. What a hypocrite. We're going to the Muller residence. You shouldn't make disparaging comments about her without even the slightest inkling of what she was like. She was a woman, wasn't she? Well, around about my third divorce, I realized women might not be the pure angels we imagine. You're married, ain't you, Phelps? Don't make any insinuations about my wife. Hey, she's a woman. She's the mother of my children. <laughs> you're a father, Cole? But don't tell me your eye don't bend. This conversation is over. think about this case. If you played L.A. Noir, you don't have to worry about spoiling it for me because this is Let's Play Classic, which means I've played the game before and I know what's going on. Alright, so I'm not worried about spoilers. Full disclosure right there. So what do you think? Who do you think did this? And I mentioned too that there's a lot of recognizable actors in this episode which I'm going to point out in a moment. Both of them are playing two potential suspects in this episode. Let's play classic L.A. Noir Gaming Walkthrough episode number five, case number, the second case of this episode, which is The Golden Butterfly.
Get out of the way. Police business. I don't know what the LED is, so I'm not messing with it. We'll keep it. Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. Is your father home? He'll be home soon. He's been out looking for mommy. What's your name, miss? Michelle Eloise Mahler. Can we come in? I suppose so. Thank you. Could you have a seat for me, Michelle? We're going to have a look around. He'll be back any moment. Just sit tight. My partner will explain everything when he gets back, okay? Don't worry about it. Work boots. Size eight. Same as the killer. No sign of a wedding ring. Watch. Probably the same one snatched from her body. Doesn't look like anything. 
kid's diary passing. This is her room. Is this about mommy? Daddy is trying to find her. Please tell me she's okay. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, Michelle, but your mother is dead. <laughs> Do you think you could answer a few questions for us? I could try. Michelle Moeller, eyes blue. Age 15, hair black, sex female, daughter of murder victim Deidre Moeller. When did you last see your mother? Yesterday afternoon. I went to a dance at Belmont High. Mommy was supposed to pick me up, but she didn't show. So what did you do then? I was upset. Daddy came instead. You know something, kid? I doubt you, so... So you were hanging around the school for quite a while. What happened with your father? I don't know. I called and called and finally he answered. He came straight away then. Missing watch and rings. Some of your mother's jewelry was missing. Can you describe her things? A ring, a watch. I never paid much attention to that stuff. Okay, you're definitely telling the truth, so it's truth. I know it's painful, Michelle, but this may be important. She wore a wedding ring? Mommy chose it herself. A rose gold wedding band and a matching diamond and ruby engagement ring. She wore a watch? Yes, a yellow gold Elgin watch. Daddy bought it for her birthday. We had a fight. It was kind of a makeup it was present. The best problems. State of your parents' marriage. Your mom and dad are uh, happily married? What are you saying? Of course they are. You mentioned that they had a fight, so doubt. They weren't happy, were they, Michelle? Did your father ever hit your mother? Just the once. She said she would leave him if he ever did it again. He bought her a brooch pin to make up for it. And he always wore her golden butterfly. Thanks, Miss Muller. You've been very brave. Hey! What gives? Daddy, the police are here. Go to your room, here. please, Michelle. I'll talk to the police. Daddy, please. mommy is gone. Go to your room, young lady. She's not even out of school. You can't come in here interrogating her like she's your some kind of... Your wife was found murdered this morning. Found? What if anyone recognizes this actor? But she only... That's great, Groomberg from... NBC's short-lived uh, We have TV some questions series, that we would like heroes. to ask you. Yeah, he's sure, that yeah. guy. Look at him. Yeah, I'll do my best. Person of interest, Hugo Muller. Eyes blue. Hair black. Age 46. Sex, male. Husband of murder victim, Deidre Muller. Footprints at crime scene. What size shoe do you wear, Mr. Muller? Why do you ask? It's routine, sir. Simple process of elimination. Nines, I think. You sure, mister? I think you're lying. Why are you lying to me, Mr. Muller? Why would I lie to you at a time like this? Because we found a pair of size 8 shoes, work boots. That's funny. The work boots we found here are size 8s. Why lie about it if you've got nothing to hide? Because I always get teased about the size of my feet. 
you know, small feet, small... Always been true <laughs> in my experience. Now, what's your alibi, Mr. Muller? So you were here all night. You stayed in while your wife went out to pick up your daughter? Yes, that's correct. It appears that you're lying again, Muller. You should come clean if you're having an affair or if there's something going on. I told you I was here. Were you saying I wasn't? Yeah. Husband's alibi. Michelle Muller reports calling home repeatedly with no answer on night of murder. Your alibi. So why did you take so long to answer the phone when your daughter called? Okay, I went out for a while. I was, I was driving around. It's my way of relaxing. Missing persons report. You phoned in a missing persons report this morning? Yeah, that's right. Uh, my wife didn't come home last night. She left around... She left around 9.30... Uh, Michelle was out at dance. She called me to let me know that Deidre didn't turn up. Doubt. Did your wife ever go out by herself? To bars? Nightclubs? No. What are you, what are you suggesting? You suggesting my wife's loose? <laughs> now is not the time for you to be pushing me, mister. Your daughter said you were having an argument. We argued about who would pick up Michelle. I worked a full day. I wanted to come home, put my feet up. Now, do you have a history of violence, Mr. Muller? Your wife was beaten and then strangled. In your case, you have no alibi and a history of violence towards your wife. That's not, that's not true, goddammit! Oh, really? You're lying. It is true, Hugo. You're a violent man. You try to keep a lid on it at home, but sometimes you lost control. Your daughter and your wife were scared of you. You don't know anything about me. Well, according to this evidence we found and the testimony of your daughter, it turns out this butterfly brooch, brooch purchased for Deidre Muller after domestic violence incident. I know about the golden butterfly, Hugo, and how you bought your wife off the last time you heard her. She liked to spend money, all right? Dresses, uh, jewelry, her hair, it drove me goddamn crazy. Do I look like a Rockefeller? Nobody likes a cheapskate, Hugo. <laughs> Getting hostile with us is a very bad idea, Hugo. I'm no murderer. Make some arrangements for your daughter, and then present yourself to Central Station for questioning. You gotta be kidding me, Phelps. Put the cuffs on him. This is an outrage! I didn't kill my wife! Your daughter is in the next room, Muller, so I'm giving you a break. Don't make me change my mind, and don't make me come looking for you. We should go back in there and bust his ass. One, we need to break his alibi, check phone records, canvas the neighbors. Two, we have motive of domestic violence, which probably goes for half the men in L.A. Three, we have no evidence tying him to the crime scene. Oh, look, there's Hello. a witness across the street. Detective! Yes, ma'am? I heard the terrible news over the radio. And you can help us with our inquiries? Yes, sir. They had a row last night. I heard Mrs. Muller screaming. Did you see Mrs. Muller come home late last night at all? No, not at all. I did see Mr. Muller put something in the incinerator earlier this morning, though. I told you he was our guy. Now let's get this bum downtown and into a cell. Look, there he is now. Hey, Hugo, what do you think you're doing? Step away from the incinerator. Don't let him get away. Okay, but no shooting. We need this guy to make the case. Don't run from me, Hugo. Stop. Stop resisting. I said you're in the war, too. Now get over here. Now explain yourself, Hugo. What do you have in the incinerator? This doesn't look you good, Hugo. Blood. Mm. I, I can explain, explain the shit. Get him booked in at Central, officer. Then put him in an interview room. We'll be speaking with him later. And inform the cat. Yes, sir, detective. Is there someone you can call, miss? I don't... I don't... 
You need somewhere to stay, Michelle. You have other family? Grandparents? Aunts or uncles? Call Aunt Helen, but she lives in Bakersfield and... Call her. We're gonna get someone down here from Juvenile Hall to talk to you in the meantime. Poor kid. We ought to get some uniforms down here, clean up, take yeah, care I'm of the kid. Yeah, I'm gonna make the call. Yeah, I'll make the call. Let me get a hold of that game well. For you laymen, that's a police and fire department call box. In this case, it's the police call box. That's a guy from the papers. Phelps, Phelps, 1247. Homicide division, badge number 564. How could I help you? Go ahead, detective unit. I need an address on a Belmont high school. a technical school. services team to a Checking house 130 you, North Bonnie Bray Street. You send someone down Belmont from Juvenile high. Hall to look after a young lady. Thanks, man. All right, let's get back in that car. Inform Detective Phelps that the coroner has a report waiting. Police morgue downtown when he's available. Got it, KGPL. So where am I gonna go first? First, we're gonna go to Belmont High School. First. Okay, Rusty, let's go. Surprised, you know. I didn't make the husband. Always make the husband. Jealous. Nine times out of ten, is the closest person to the Vic who does the deed. God knows I've wanted to kill some wives in my day. Lex yeah, Parsimony, yeah, too. What? Surprise the law of Parsimony. Officer. Occam's razor. The simplest explanation is most likely the correct one. You know, you could have said that without getting all liturgical. I'll try to dumb things down from now on. Appreciate it. You try this one on. Rusty's razor. How's that go? You blame the guy that's banging her. Ah, of course. The famous Lex Ignoramus. Closes cases, Cole. Puts a lot of people away, that one. What a little Any central unit, a possible 288 at Belmont High School, 1575 West 2nd okay, Street. That's us. Stand by for further unit to handle, identify. Belmont yeah, High School, 342 PM. It's the first season since Fabric Rationing's over. We have to go. I told you, this I can't Saturday. Fuck. Look at that. I'm busy. Busy where? You're going on another drive with Davy Gardner, aren't Ooh, you? Look at that car. The car's nice. So what if I am? Go, Phelps. I'll take the car and see if I can cut him off. All right, you creep. Where do you think you're going? Stop, or I will shoot. All right, you creep, stop. Lock him up and throw away the key. Ah! All right, shit heel, stop. There he is, officer. Yeah, I can see that. I'm not blind. All right. All right, you perp, stop. Come here, come here, come here. You're chasing them all over the fucking city. Stop. Aha, you ain't running now, sucker. Gonna fight? That's far enough, freak. You move a muscle and you're a dead man. Car 11K, Car 11 King, come in. Get your ass down. Sit your ass down. Car 11K, Car 11 King, come in. 11K, go ahead. 11K, see the janitor. A green 1946 coupe registered to a Mrs. Hugo Moeller has been found in the 
parking lot adjoining the Belmont High School and playing field, 11K code 2. What's your name? Yeah, Who's I just asking? We can do this the easy way or the hard way. Name's Eli Rooney. You've been in trouble with the law before, Eli? Some. As I mentioned, what are you doing around here? I like to keep an eye on the children. Strictly this paternal, is, is it, Eli? Gaines. Don't He's sass me, boy. A woman was abducted here last night, children Eli, and murdered. Fans. And I would love to make you for that, you oaky motherfucker. Also been in well, I wouldn't know nothing about that. And he was in the video. A game. woman, you say? That had full motion video. I like him a little younger than that. Feet. Turn out your pockets, Eli. Now, why would I do that? Because I'm about to break your fucking skull, Eli. Also in the burbs. You're under arrest, Eli. Butterfly You're in very deep trouble. Get some backup down here, Rusty. We need to get this one downtown and into a cell. I'll tell them we got a kitty raper. <laughs> yeah. They'll have fun with him. What time did you see the person park the car? Late last night, after school social, maybe 1 a.m. I've been keeping a good eye out lately. We've had problems with the child molester. Eli Rooney. You've met him. Filthy son of a bitch. He was here yesterday before the dance. Was it him you saw park the car? I don't know, sir. I'd like to say yes, but the truth is it was pretty dark. Would you say Rooney is violent? Yes, sir. I would say so, yes. Thanks for your help. Let's go check the trunk of the vehicle. Bloody rope? Blood and skin samples. We better get Ray Pinker out here. The overalls H are stenciled down. HM. Muller is a mechanic. I wonder what Eli does for a living. Already got the rope. Put off this tire iron. It's from a Chrysler. Could be important. Phelps, badge 1247. How could I help, Detective? I need interrogation set up at Central for both suspects being held in the Mahler homicide case. Certainly, Detective. I'll get in touch with the watch commander. Thanks. I say we make Rooney for this. I think we should lay it on him. He was near the car, he had her jewelry, the DA will love him for it. Even if he didn't do it? Who cares whether he did it? You have kids, Phelps? He needs to be taken permanently out of harm's way. And we let Muller slide? For a while. He gets a free pass for now. I don't know about this. My gut says Muller. We caught him trying to destroy evidence in his backyard. And that was his car with the bloody tools in it. I never said it wasn't Muller. Hell, he probably killed his wife, deprived that poor kid of a mother. But he's not in immediate danger to anyone else. Rooney's a threat right. to every kid at Belmont. He's a peeper, Rusty. We can pick him up for something else. You really want to run that risk?
So there's a new development in the Deidre Moral Art, in the Deidre Moral Art. Top Secret. The Coroner Dr. Alvin Carruthers. For those who don't know, Ray Pinker is a real person. He pioneered Los Angeles Police Department forensics technology, including the fingerprint system, footprints, etc. Central Morgue, 618 p.m. Los Angeles County Morgue. A biblical verse from the Book of Matthew. The early bird gets the worm. The second mouse gets the cheese. Do some work, janitor. Let's go see. Phelps, Rusty, thanks for coming. Can you blood type the shoes that we bagged and see if they're a match? Sure. It'll all be in the report, but I'm assuming you want the details now? Please. Cause of death is strangulation? Correct. Take a look at the samples on the bench. Guess that ain't it. This obviously ain't it. It's this one. What are the normal uses for that kind of rope? On boats, mooring lines. Correct. Although Ray says that they're sometimes used as bell ropes in churches. Obviously not this rope. So are we looking for a, a sailor or a minister? Well, in my experience, sailors seem to have the greater libido. Was Mrs. Muller criminally attacked? No external or internal traces of semen. Thanks, Mal. Anything else comes up, you let us know. We've got to nail this guy. Let's get this show on a roll for the home stretch, folks. You know the way, you can drive. And where exactly are we going? Central Police Station. Let's hit it. Not exactly the happiest of places, the coroner's office. Carruthers is a good man, professional, diligent. If you're working with a pro, it's easy to overlook the grim realities of a place like that. Funny job, uh -huh. coroners. How so? You, know, you don't want them enjoying their work too much. The wrong kind of man can get off and lonely rattling around a joint full of corpses. Rusty, that's like something out of the pulps. Been reading the same ones as me? I thought you were usually too drunk to get through a magazine. You know, if I close one eye and squint, you can just about make out the print. I want to thank everybody for tuning into this episode of Let's Play Classic L.A. Noir. You better not go soft on me in here, Phelps. We'll work the evidence, Rusty. Let him do it. Are they ready? Bowlers in two and the perverts in one. Get in there and get a conviction. All right. I want to make homicide. You know you made it. You know I am in homicide. Boys! 
Captain, uh, we were on our way to interview Eli Rooney. Yes, Phelps, I know. This particular fiend is an old acquaintance. I have tried to reaffirm his belief in the wrathful and terrible God. Whichever way it goes, I'll be dealing personally with him. Oi. <laughs> so let's go interview him. Not you yet. Not you. Bust in there and find the goddamn evidence. You have a Anybody make any coffee for you? I don't have coffee for you. Because two must be down here. You need to find some coffee for you? Yeah. Parker or Green? I don't know who would be worse. Yeah, that's the holding cell. That's the light up gallery. <laughs> okay, there's two. I need a drink. I got the jitters again. This guy's got a. Here's where we stand, Hugo. Your next door neighbor heard screaming coming from your house. You were burning your blood-stained shoes. You have no one who can confirm your whereabouts last night. Your daughter says you're a violent man. We have everything we need to send you to death row. And all you have to say for yourself is, I didn't do it. I swear I didn't kill her. Give me that lie test. I can prove it. Disposal of evidence. Let's talk. Why did you burn your shoes, Hugo? Because I knew you'd never believe me. Okay, I'm gonna call that uh, true. Believe what? It's rabbit's blood. A guy at work brought him in and I helped him skin him. Access to braided rope. Do you know anything about ropes, Hugo? As much as the next man. I, I was a scout. I learned some more in the army. What else do you know, mister? You learned to strangle with the rope in the army? With rope, with uh, my bare hands, but mainly with wire. I learned a lot of things in the army, but I, I still didn't kill my wife. For argument's sake, what type of rope would you use? If I had to, I would use a triple braid. Less flex, easier to control. Victim's vehicle recovery. We found your wife's car. Someone parked it at the school late last night. Do you have anything to say about that? It wasn't me. Where do you keep your work clothes? I keep them at work in my locker. Is that right? Well, I think you're lying. Enough lies, Hugo. Your overalls put you at the scene of the crime last night. My overalls are in the laundry of my house. Sometimes you have to shake the tree to see what falls out. Let's read the transcript. We're asking about his clothes.
let's hope I get this right. Green overalls, blood stain, with the initials <laughs> HM found in the trunk of your wife's car. They can't be mine. Why, Hugo? Because if they were yours, they'd be in the incinerator too? <laughs> Access to tire iron. Your wife was beaten with a tire iron, Hugo. An appropriate choice of tool for a mechanic. I know nothing about any tire iron. You're lying again. Stop lying. You're lying, Hugo. You're gonna have to come clean on this. You got no proof. Oh yeah, well this is what we also found with your bloody, supposedly bloody uniform. We also found a bloody tire on that cleats, completes the set, so. Your wife drove a Chevrolet, Hugo. What make of car do you drive? A uh, Chrysler Airflow. So I guess that explains why the tire iron that killed your wife came from a Chrysler. So I have two choices. Charge suspect or leave interrogation. We're going to leave interrogation because I do believe Moeller is innocent. So leave interrogation. Hey, you think those vice boys get any other side? Five-star goddamn way. Let's go to interview number one. One of these days. With Eli Rudy. Oh, here he is. Got to give it the you look like you've had it rough. You see me asking for your sympathy, boy? See, that's, once again, that's Courtney Gaines from Children of the Corn and some other stuff. Eli Rooney, blue, eyes blue, hair brown, age 48, male, alleged child sex offender. Place You're down on your luck, Eli. I had worse. My family ate roadkill during the Dust Bowl. But you have a job. A parolee has to have a job, correct? I had me a job down in San Pedro. I'm looking for something new. This place you worked have a name? Hennessy Marine. You can't miss the place. Big yellow letters HM out front. They give you any work wear, Eli? Sure. Green coverall. <laughs> Dang thing was hot. Felt like I was back in the pen wearing it. Access to braided rope. You ever tie up any of your victims, Eli? It's not a nice thing to go calling them. What would you call them? I can't say. I learned a long time ago not to go talk about the things I like. Talking about it just seems to get people's dander up. Answer the goddamn question, Rooney, before I brain you! See what I mean? Short answer is yes. You have any preference regarding rope, Eli? I know a good rope from a bad rope, if that's what you mean. That's not what you mean, is it? Hmm. Any old rope will do me fine. Truth. Farm boy like you, Eli, must prefer McGay for roping, am I right? I prefer braid, tie hitching braid, stays tied. Motive for Moeller murder. You killed Mrs. Moeller and stole her jewelry. That ain't so. Ain't done nothing like that. Oh, yeah? You have no job and nowhere to live by the smell of things. And you need money. You've been in trouble before, Eli. Who do you think a jury will believe? I've been in trouble for other things, but I ain't never killed no one. I saw that car coming to the parking lot late last night. Man got changed there and put his coveralls in the trunk. I saw him drop the butterfly in the lamplight and he strolled out, cool as you like. And I went over and I picked it up. <laughs> okay. Charging. Charge. Eli Rooney, I'm charging you with the first degree murder of Deirdre Muller. You don't want to put me back in the stir that badly, boy. You go ahead and try. I'll beat that rat. I ain't a killer. I ain't a killer. But you are a piece of shit pedophile. And you know what they do to you. Rusty knows. Don't you, Rusty?
Ah, uh, Phelps, Galloway. Congratulations are at hand. Drink, boys? Mm -hmm. I think you'll receive a commendation for this one, gentlemen. In the meantime, I'll speak to the DA about expediting the passage of the case. We need swift and merciless justice for poor Deirdre. Yeah, Rusty, you get a drink again. Let's see how I did. The Golden Butterfly. Valorius, case closed, five stars. Clues, out 11 out of 12 found. Questions correct, 14 out of 14. No damage. Eli Rooney can expect a warm welcome from Captain Donnelly and the District Attorney. Well done. And it looks like that's gonna do it for this edition of Let's Play Classic, L.A. Noir, Episode Five. I've solved two cases back to back: the red lipstick murder, followed by the golden butterfly. Now, if you liked what you saw, why not do me a solid and subscribe? Hit the notification bell, like, comment. To the 9 to 5 Outlaw Does Gaming YouTube and Twitch channel as I'll be playing out some more Let's Play classics such as L.A. Noir, which you've just seen, as well as Sleeping Dogs, Night of Bottle 5, and many others. And if you like to contribute, if you feel a little generous, you'll be pleased to know that I do have a Patreon. Link is in the description. Until then, I'm Kill the Vid for the 9 to 5 Outlaw Does Gaming YouTube and Twitch channel. I'll be back with some more Let's Play classics such as this game. Until then, stay safe.